Hello everybody, for those that weren't uh, here before, my name is Andrea, I work for GeoSolutions, which is an uh, Italian basic company contributing to GeoTools, GeoServer, and a number of other projects. And in this presentation, uh, I'm going to show you some examples of uh, how to use uh, GeoServer SLD and GeoServer CSS, which is a new extension, to uh, uh, solve common cartographic uh, issues when drawing maps and uh, yeah uh, all the uh, all the examples will or almost all of the examples will show both the ASLD syntax and the CSS syntax just so that you can have a quick comparison of them um, for the SLD I'm going to only show the important part of the style sheet because the style sheets are always very long so I, I'm going to focus only on the part that I wanted to show you uh, the equivalent CSS is always shown in full instead because it's so compact that I can always, besides one slide, stick it into, into the slide fully. Uh, SLD and CSS have, have their pros and cons. As I said, CSS is very compact, is very expressive, but it's not a standard. SLD is. So if you go for an interoperable approach, you go for SLD. If you want quickly make maps, uh, you probably want to go with the CSS instead. So I have an example map which is a sort of a real world map. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures of, the, of this map. So we start up with some digital elevation model and the city, city borders. Uh, we start showing up uh, uh, the roads, then more details about uh, roads and, and, and so on, the buildings. Uh, then the parcels and so on. As you can see also the, the styling of the roads changed as I switched, um, uh, as I switched uh, representation. So this, uh, this is kind of uh, what you would expect from a multi-resolution multi map. That is, uh, never fill it with too much information and uh, uh, change the, the styling of the uh, various element height and show depending on the current scale so that uh, you have appropriate content for the scalar where you're looking at the map. So uh, the, the first thing uh, I'm going to talk about is raster styling, which uh, in ju I mean, uh, um, raster styling is generally pretty easy. You either have an RGB aerial or satellite image, which you have to show as is, and you basically don't have to do anything, or you have a digital elevation model or any kind of other geophysical parameter pressure, temperature, whatever, concentration of pollutant. And then you have to set up a color map. A color map in SLD 1.0 is a list of color map entries where you map a color with an eventual opacity. In this case, opacity 0 means uh, transparent, and to a quantity. A and then you provide uh, uh, a list of values with a list of colors, and your server linearly interpolates between, between the various combinations. So you basically are giving it tie points and uh, any value in between is interpolated linearly between the two colors that you gave for those tie points. The CSS expression is just slightly more compact. This is one case where CSS and SLD are uh, similar. I just switched the kind of representation. Instead of having it uh, display the linear interpolation between uh, the tie points, in this case, I modified the, the, uh, the type of uh, uh, approach to intervals. In this case, it's solid color between one type point and, and the other. So you get basically polygon representations instead of continuous uh, continuous display, which makes sense in case, I don't know, you have a pollutant and you only want to show the areas where the concentration is above a certain limit. Then, as I said, scale-dependent rules are the, the basics, the, the one thing that you really have to master the day you want to start making mapping. All layers, too often forgotten or little used, yet very important. Uh, data e exposed on the web is multi-resolution. Multi it's not your old paper map that has a fixed resolution and you decide on a display and that's it. A web map is about showing data at different resolutions, and at different resolutions you want to show data in a different way or you want to show different data. So the styles need to um, 
take that into account and pro progressively show details because otherwise the map gets too crowded and nobody can actually read it. And uh, also for performance uh, reasons, uh, you don't want to, to have to display 100 million lines in a tiny map, which would r just result in a black blob, right? Uh, but it would also take a lot of time to do, to do that. And uh, so uh, this is one case where uh, the same tool gives you at the same time a good looking map and a high performance one. Uh, this is a, an example of uh, scale dependencies. As you, show, as you can see, I sh progressively show more and more detail and I end up hiding other ledgers. Sorry. So we start with the digital elevation model showing, and at some point we turn it off because the grid cell of the digital elevation model gets uh, unsuitable for a high resolution display. They are too coarse. And I keep on adding data first, the highways, then the uh, roads, then the buildings, as I zoom in. And uh, also the display of the roads goes from single line to a cased line. Uh, and again, I do it when I change the scale, when it makes sense to uh, actually change the display. So the turn, uh, OK. So in uh, uh, SLD, this is controlled by two elements, mean scale denominator and max scale denominator. In CSS, there is a, a property, that you, a pseudo property that you can filter on for a rule. So this part is actually a filter. And it says, well, when the scale, actually it's the scale denominator, is below 75,000, then apply this, which applies a labeling, which I would otherwise not show at 1 to 1,000, for example. And, uh, and the SLD does the equivalent thing. Another thing that you might want to do is alternative rendering. So I don't hide the data, but I change the way in which I display it. And uh, as you see, as I zoom in, uh, I change the way I display the roads from single line to case line. In the case of SLD, I'm playing with both mean and max scale denominator to turn on and off the, the rules. And uh, sa same here, I do uh, play with the max scale denominator so that uh, I turn off uh, the uh, case line display, whilst this one goes from 10,000 to, to 75,000. So a single line goes from 10,000 to 75,000. When I'm be, uh, above 10,000, uh, then I display a case line. And this is just uh, some chunks of the full style. This is instead the full style in CSS. So again, when the, style, when the scale is between 10,000 and 75,000, uh, you, you can almost read it. I can uh, use a gray line, uh, two pixels wide, and uh, look at this one. This is cascading. It's the ability of CSF to say CSS to combine rules that uh, uh, are active at, at the same time, which SLD doesn't have. So basically, for any road, be, uh, for any road, uh, when the scale is less than uh, the scale denominator is less than one to seven five thousand, then I apply the labeling, which I, where I pick the, the label from uh, an attribute, label name, and uh, I apply some parameters that I'm going to talk about later when uh, we talk about uh, styling. When the scale is less than ten thousand, instead, I go for the case of display, which is done by uh, specifying the stroke more times than one. So I say first gray, then white, outer line, inner line. The stroke width, 17 pixels, and then 12 pixels. So the gray one will be 17 pixels, the white one will be 12 pixels. And then I apply the Z index so that uh, all the gray lines are painted first, and then all the white lines are, are painted second. This is important to get the proper display of crossings. And I ask for a uh, round uh, line cap around the line join. So as, as you can see, this is very compact and allows me to change the display depending on the scale without having to repeat the, the labeling portion, which is common uh, between the two, uh, the two styles. Another thing that uh, uh, it's uh, often uh, missing or misused is the use of patches, patterns, dashes, and plates. 
So in, S in both SLD and CSS, you can fill polygons with the solid color, and that's, um, I mean, something that you can do easily. Or you can uh, fill polygons by repeating symbols, tiling them, so that we have uh, a different kind of display like this. In the case of SLD, we have this very long-winded syntax to say, oh, OK, use this little image to fill me the polygon. In CSS, is actually, this is the full style. This is just part of it, where I say, oh, OK, when the MPFCC attribute, which is a classification attribute, is this value, which uh, mm, matches cemeteries, which is also in ASLD, but it was so long that I had to cut it, then use this, this um, mark, this image, to fill it. So as you can see, two lines, and it's done. Uh, we can also fill with the uh, true type fonts. If you come from an Azure background, it's common to have uh, lots of uh, simple libraries <coughs> as true type fonts. GeoServer can refer to them. Uh, what I'm doing here, if the code is, again, the one of the cemeteries, paint me a, a light gr uh, like green background plus uh, apply this symbol. I'm referring to the font and I'm giving the, the code of the character. Plus I'm saying, oh, OK. While you're at it, please add uh, an 8-pixel margin around the, the symbol to space it out a bit so that all the crosses not, don't get touching each other, which is uh, an extension. It, it's also available for SLD, of course. Uh, hatches uh, are supported via uh, extended well-known names uh, in SLD. Uh, SLD provides the notion of well-known marks, which are five or six names like circle, square, uh, cross, and so on. Uh, GeoServer has uh, extended that, uh, that, so that concept, and we have uh, the ability to uh, add new kinds of markers by code. Uh, one of them is called uh, times, which is a cross. And uh, um, that's how you do it in, uh, uh, in CSS. I'm saying, oh, OK, fill me with the times symbol. Now, there's a catch. When I'm filling with a, a graphic symbol like a mark, I also have to specify uh, the color and, uh, of the stroke and the, the how do I fill it if it's an area. To do that in, uh, uh, in CSS, we have to say something like this, column fill, which means inside that fill, please use this stroke, which is this color, and give me a size of 8. The bigger the size, the coarser the, the pattern gets, because the x becomes bigger. This is some of the other symbols that we support built in. Uh, you can add more. So you have the basic catches there. Then you can have dashes. That is the ability, oh, come on. The ability to um, display a dotted line or a dot line uh, whatever uh, support. In uh, CSS, you would say, oh, OK, give me a dash array of two, which means two pixels pen down, two pixels pen up, two pixels pen down, two pixels pen up, and repeat, and so on. And uh, you can have uh, more than one value. If you want to have a dot line, you would say two pixels down, 10 pixels up, 10 pixels down, and, uh, ten, and uh, 10 pixels up again, and then repeat from the beginning. And that would give you a dot line representation. Uh, the, oh, again, the, CS, the CSS representation is quite compact for this. One twist that GeoServer adds, which is not fully part of the specification, not the DSLD 1.0, and it's more flexible that, than what the SLD 1.1 supports, is the ability to um, use um, a mark and repeat it along the line, but also specify uh, a dash array for it. So the idea is that I'm, I'm repeating a circle along the line, but I'm using the dash array to space it so that uh, it's repeated with some space within. And then I use another line, which is also a, a dashed line. And I'm using the dash offset to synchronize the two patterns so that they don't overlap with each other, but they are alternate with each other. Uh, the ability to use a dash array with uh, a symbol to be repeated is unique to GeoServer. Uh, SLD 1.1 uh, has the idea of a gap between the symbols, but it would be a uniform one. GeoServer allows you to, to do non-uniform stuff because it uses the dash array, which can have more than one number. 
plates, rod plates. The idea is that I wanted to put a label on, uh, um, on a map and I wanted to have uh, maybe a rectangle, maybe a, an icon below it uh, and maybe adapt it to the sides of the, of the label. In this case, uh, GeoServer has an extension on top of the basic SLD which allows you to put a graphic element into a text symbolizer which is something that you normally wouldn't be allowed to do. And uh, I'm basically saying, oh, okay, uh, for this label, please use a, um, a mark. Uh, I didn't specify the, the name of the mark, but it's a, it's a square. And then there is another set of uh, options that say, oh, okay, with the mark, please resize it to uh, match the, uh, the proportions of the label. So I'm resizing, stretching it. So it's not more, no more a square, but it's a rectangle. And I'm also adding a graphic margin, that is some spacing between the label and, and the rectangle. And that's the result. Now, this is a very long style. And this is the equivalent in CSS. When I'm doing basically the same thing, in CSS the graphic is called shield. And I'm saying, oh, use me a square. And um, I'm setting the recite mode and the margin here. So, this is uh, how you do it in CSS. When it comes to point symbology, uh, I have I really have to do something about this. Uh, sorry. So here I have uh, some sort of thematic map made uh, with points. I have points which represent locations, and I wanted to display each one with a different symbol depending on the nature of the locations. Some are shopping centers, or there are schools, or there are uh, government buildings, and so on. And I have, again, them categorized by that uh, MTFCC uh, code. I have to put uh, together a quite long-winded uh, fi filter to specify the shoppings, because the shopping centers, because they are uh, something like, uh, oh, MTFCC li is uh, C3081, and then in the name of the of the thing that has to be shopping inside. And then I choose this particular uh, icon. And I have to repeat this like 16 times, resulting 600, no, sorry, for six times, resulting in 600 lines of SLD to create uh, the various symbol and specify a uh, label for them. Uh, when I do it with CSS, this is, the, this is the only one where I could not fit the CSS in the slide. It's 70 lines. But the idea is that, again, I'm using the power of cascading. I'm saying for any, that star means match any, for any of those points, please use this um, uh, label, full name. And if I don't say you otherwise, please use a, a black circle to, to display it. But if I'm, I'm matching a, a shopping center, then use this icon instead. So I'm basically setting the basics and then overriding them only in the parts that I need to override. Result that 600 lines of uh, SLD becomes only 70 lines of CSS. And then if I'm willing to modify my data, I can shrink it further. The idea is that why do I have to set up all these filters in the SLD? Maybe I could put the name of the icon that I want to use directly in the data and pick it from the attribute instead. So this is some S uh, uh, SQL that I ran to do that. I basically added a new, uh, a new attribute and I'm sticking into the data the image that I want to use. Uh, this is again a GeoServer extension where I'm basically, instead of using the full path uh, as before, I have this parameter, uh, dollar $image, where I'm saying, OK, this last part of the path you pick from the image attribute. So I only have to display one, uh, sorry, to prepare one rule instead of six. And this works, of course, also in CSS and reduces the overall styles to uh, 15 lines. So much more compact. And this is the result that I, I get. When it comes to labeling, uh, GeoServer has a lot of, lots and lots of vendor options to control how the, the labels are displayed. Uh, just to make you some examples, this road is following the line. This, sorry, no, not this road, it is label. And this one is actually uh, 
uh, being wrapped uh, on two lines. And this is a set of vendor options that control, uh, control this. In this case, for la uh, line labeling, I'm saying vendor option name, follow line through, that is curved labels, repeat the label every uh, 250 pixels. So if I have a very long line, I display it multiple times. Uh, I'm grouping the labels because most of the time, this Mapleton Avenue is actually made of one feature and another feature and another and another and another and another because they are, they are broken at crossings. But for the sake of display, I would like to have the whole line instead. And this uh, uh, group uh, vendor option makes GeoServer figure out which lines have the same label and it fuses them. And then there is max displacement that allows the, the system to move the label along the line a bit in case the place where you wanted to put it is already busy with another uh, label to avoid uh, conflicts, visual conflicts. The equivalent, the full equivalent style in the CSS we already saw. Uh, the only thing to point out here, here is how we specify the vendor options, which is here, same as above. Um, point labels, for point labels, uh, we don't need to do much, but some of them are very, very long. And when I'm labeling a line, it, it's fitting. Uh, in, in a sense that uh, the line is long, so I have a, a long label along it, right? But when it comes to a point, I don't want a pointer to have a label that takes half of the map. I can have GeoServer automatically wrap it to a certain length. So this is a vendor option named auto wrap at 100 pixels. So if the label goes beyond 100 pixels, uh, GeoServer wraps it up for me automatically in one or more lines to satisfy the maximum um, length. For polygon labels, um, again we are using auto wrap to have the, the label be uh, packed in a small space. We are applying the max displacement and then there is one parameter which is probably not very well known to even to a long time GeoServer users which is the goodness of fit. Basically, GeoServer won't try to display a label if the label is much bigger than the polygon itself. So basically, GeoServer is trying to compute how big the, the label is uh, compared to the polygon. And uh, the, the label is going to be displayed if 70% of it, by default, fits into the polygon. So we allow the label to go a bit outside, but not much. With 0.9, I'm actually allowing 90% of the label to go outside the polygon because in this map I actually wanted the labels to be visible even if the polygon was small. We can also apply the concept of uh, label obstacles which is the idea that uh, some uh, polygons, some lines and some points should not, be overla uh, should not be overlapping labels. So I'm basically saying that any of these symbols is a label uh, obstacle so that I don't have this kind of situation where Boulder Country label overlaps with this uh, symbol. And here we go. I have City Hall showing, but uh, the uh, Boulder County one is not because the, that point has been marked as a uh, label obstacle. Transformations. We have two kinds of transformation in GeoServer, geometry transformation and rendering transformation. Rendering transformation I talked about a bit in the presentation before. The idea is that before rendering the map, I might want to apply some change to the geometry that I'm displaying or some change to the whole layer that I'm displaying. The idea of uh, uh, geometry transformation is that uh, I, I take the geometry and then I apply a, a, an offset function on top of it to offset it a bit to do what? Generate a, a simple shadow effect. So I'm moving the geometry, painting it with a darker color, and then on top of it I, I painted the normal geometry. Uh, there is a very large number of functions that can be applied to geometries to extract vertices, to extract the beginning and ending of a line, and so on. Here is uh, the CSS version of the same style. See how, how much easier it is to to apply the offset, this one you can actually read, the offset the, the attribute, which is called DJOM by these offsets. Um, this is another example in SLD of a geometry transformation. In this case, I'm extracting the end of lines because I want to add an arrow uh, at the end of lines. And I'm actually doing some uh, 
magic, which is probably, oh yeah, the angle. Uh, the rotation of the arrow has to be aligned to the en uh, end of the line. I'm applying another function, which is called end angle, to get the ending angle of that line uh, and use it as the rotation of the arrow so that the arrow aligns with the end of the line. Then we have rendering transformation, which is the concept of applying some spatial data processing on the fly to, uh, to, give, uh, to, to provide a different representation of the data. In this case, I'm uh, uh, calling the GS Contour WPS process on the fly, extracting a number of ISO lines that I'm then, dis then displaying on the map. This is the only one feature that is missing from CSS. In CSS, to date, you cannot express a rendering transformation yet. There is some work going on to add the syntax for this. And this is very powerful because, as I, as I said before, uh, this kind of transformation are applied only on the area that I'm looking at and only at the resolution I'm looking at so that uh, uh, it, they are actually very fast because they are not processing the whole data set, they are not processing the data set at its native resolution, they are processing it at the, the resolution I'm looking at. Uh, in a look for our uh, blog uh, on, on the internet in a few days, uh, I'm going to share the presentation material and a GeoServer data directory that has all the SLD styles, all, all the CSS styles, and the, the data that you have seen on the screen. And uh, this is it. Yes? <coughs> With the labeling context, is there some way to give priority to some labels? Oh, yeah. The, the, the option was always there, but uh, I never actually talked about it. Let's see here. SLD priority, and I'm giving it a number. The higher the number, the higher the priority for that label. But, but the, I mean, on the parameter, the value of the parameter. Ah, yes, that can be an expression. You can okay. pick it from uh, the database if you want. Yes? Anything else? Please. Uh, using CSS, not 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 at the moment. You have to do it within the user, the GeoServer user interface. But we are moving towards uh, making CSS and SLD peers. At the moment, CSS is actually turned on the fly in SLD before GeoServer uses it. We are working towards making them interchangeable. And at that point, you will be able to uh, upload under CSS. Yeah.